Na ramię. Broń. Prezentuj. Broń. Good day to you. In this video I will talk about royal guards who are the soldiers that represent the United Kingdom of Great Britain and protect the Queen Elizabeth II. I have divided this film for seven parts. I will introduce the history and the structure of guard. I will show uniforms, equipment and the guards drill. I will tell where they are placed and at the end I'm going to discuss the changing of the guard and one of the most spectacular ceremonies in the entire kingdom. The beginnings of the formation of the Royal Guard can be traced back to around 1660, when an event called the Stuart Restoration took place. Then, a new King Charles II has started to rule the kingdom and since that time royal guards protect the most important places in country and the monarch's resident. Being fully trained and fully capable of fighting soldiers, the guards took part in many battles, also during the First and Second World War, and in our times the soldiers of the royal guard still continue their hostilities. Queen's Guard is formed from six regiments, Queen's Life Guard and five regiments of Foot Guards, Grenadier Guards, Coldstream Guards, Scots Guards, Irish Guards and Welsh Guards. And these are the commanders of those regiments, Grenadier Regiment Prince Andrew and earlier Princess Elizabeth in 1942 and the late Prince Philip from 1975 to 2017. Coldstream Guards Regiment, Lieutenant General Sir James Geoffrey Corfield Bucknell, Scots Guards Regiment, Prince Edward, Irish Guards Regiment, Prince William, Welsh Guards Regiment, Prince Charles, and also Prince Philip commanded this regiment from 1953 to 1975. Infantry Guards uniform contains these elements, starting from the bottom. Parade boots with hobnails and horseshoes, which protect the lever sole and they are responsible for the acoustic effect during march. In order to achieve a mirror shine, a wax is used. Actually, a lot of wax. English soldiers cover the entire surface of the boot with a melded beeswax and then they polish it using an appropriate shoe polishing paste. This procedure takes from one to two weeks. Soldiers' boots have to be always perfectly polished so that the queen could see herself in a reflection and correct her hairstyle. We are going higher. Black trousers with red stripes and on the torso there is a red jacket with a white belt. On cold days, guards put on navy blue raincoats. On their head they wear a bear skin. It is a high cap made of a bear fur. This type of a headgear was introduced into the army for a very simple psychological reason. Soldiers wearing bear skins look like much taller men so the sight of charging giants could cause quite a lot of discomfort to the enemy. However, the discomfort was and still is felt by the wearers themselves, because the weight of those caps is almost a one kilogram. Officers' bare skins are characterized by the fact that they are actually higher than those worn by privates and non-commissioned officers. In order to distinguish individual regiments, plumes of different colors are attached to the bare caps. White Grenadiers, Red Coldstream Guards, St. Patrick's Blue Irish Guards, White Green White Welsh Guards, and Scots Guards who doesn't have any plume. Soldiers are on duty with L85 Balpap rifles with bayonets attached. If necessary, guards can insert a magazine with life ammunition. 
Officers and cavalrymen hold the saber instead of firearm. Stereotypically, we associate Great Britain with a country of gentlemen and people who speak kindly to each other. But that doesn't apply to the military. There is no place or time for gentle interactions in the army. The representative army, such as the Queen's Guard, especially requires its soldiers to perfectly master marching steps, grips with a rifle and turns. Here are some basic commands that soldiers receive and execute. Right! Turn! Quick! March! Hold! Left! Turn! About! Turn! Guards are stationed in the most important facilities in the Great Britain. They are on guard there 24 hours a day and are intended to protect the people staying there. And these places are as follows. Buckingham Palace, Clarence House, St. James Palace, the Tower of London, Windsor Castle, the Palace of Holyrood House and Redford Barracks. As it is commonly known, no guard could stay at the post all day. Therefore, the changing of the guard takes place every hour in all the aforementioned facilities. The event is perceived as a tourist attraction, but the changing of the guard never was really introduced to entertain the chatter. The grand changing of the guard takes place in front of the Buckingham Palace from 11 a.m., and lasts 45 minutes. The birthday of the monarch is the most appropriate occasion for the largest military parade in the kingdom to take place. The feast on the birthday of the sovereign has been celebrated since 1748 in June, and the initiator of this tradition was George II, who was born in October, but he preferred the celebration to take place in the warmer month. The ceremony begins around 10 a.m. and is attended by approximately 1,400 soldiers, 200 horses and orchestra of 400 people, members of the royal family and the queen herself. The climax of the ceremony is the escort for the color, attended by one of the companies, ensign and the leading officer. During the march, the orchestra performs a piece about British Grenadiers. Escort for the colour! By the left! Quick march! After the subdivision reaches the designated position, the ensign receives the colour from the assistant and the national anthem of Great Britain is played. The ceremony ends with a parade in front of Her Majesty. Then the entire royal family returns to Buckingham Palace to watch the passage of the Royal Air Force planes from the balcony. This is the end of the video about British Guards.
Many thanks for watching. I recommend you to reach for my previous productions.